Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing an engine bay detail on the Mustang. Uh, the car's got actually an aftermarket bonnet on it, so it's got two huge grills or slits to kind of suck the air in to feed the engine with fresh air at, um, at all times. Um, so it's good for performance, but also it's bad for at this time of year, you've got flies, dust, just general pollen um, being sucked into the engine bay as well. Um, but it just gives me another excuse to kind of detail it. So for the last three months, again, we've been really busy, so I haven't had time to kind of do a maintenance on the engine bay. Um, I usually do it about once a month. I redress it once a month as well. So you'll see it's gonna be quite dusty under there. It's still gonna to look to most people, 90% of people are gonna go, wow, you, you, you're gonna detail this engine bay. Um, so I'm gonna show you the steps and procedures that I take. Obviously all the safety parameters, there isn't many because it's a brand new car, but still I will try and point out anything that you should kind of be aware of. Um, and exactly the products, the tools you need, and also kind of the aftercare that you will take on the engine bay after it's done. So let's get to it. So we've popped the bonnet up, we've inspected the engine. It is quite dusty, like I said. So what I usually do is I'm gonna do um, a thorough pre-rinse on the engine. So that's basically to remove anything that's already loose. You don't wanna be moving that dirt around um, and kind of inhibiting the cleaner. So you want the cleaner to try and bond onto the stuff that isn't loose. Um, this engine is very well protected. So 80%, 90% of the rinse cycle will remove um, anything that I've already just mentioned. So because this car is modern, so if anything, if your car is any older than say 99, 2000, so 2000 and onwards, um, you should be completely safe because all the connections and everything else that's in the engines, well, it's what's called splash proofing. So the engine is splash proofed. Um, if actually, if you look deeper into the engine, I can actually see the concrete. So I always say that if you drive, say, on the motorway um, at 70 mile an hour in the rain, come back home, open up your bonnet and have a look. Your, your, your entire engine bay is saturated in water anyway. So as I said, it is splash proof and it's totally safe. Obviously use common sense. Don't put your pressure washer on full wax or two and a half, 3000 PSI and aim it directly into a connection because yes, problems are going to occur because of the pressure. Now, if you just stand back and give it a general fine like you would the car anyway, it's totally safe. Obviously then, the way I do it, I pre-treat it with our cleaner and then I snow foam on top. So basically that just gives it extra lubrication and extra cleaning. Um, and then I'm going to agitate it with the wheel woolies, our detailing brushes and get the big areas in. And you're also going to get uh, the tight nooks and crannies in there. And then you just rinse it, dry it and protect it. So I'm going to show you how it's done. So the engine's cool to the touch. You can see you can put your hands on there. If you have recently driven it, um, I would recommend that you kind of let the engine sit, obviously turned off, let it cool down. That way the chemicals won't dry up any earlier than they should do. Got a new pipe on there on the pressure washer so it's just running through. So again, one of our products that is in development. So the engine bay is actually beaten quite nicely. Again, that's existing protection from the human dress. So I'm gonna just liberally spray everything down and that's gonna start attacking anything that is more stubborn. But in my case, it's, it's not gonna be that stubborn because as I said, I look after the engine bay very, very well. 
but I'm still going to do this step anyway because I, I re-protect the engine after every cleaning. Again, get it on the painted part. Again, the painted part is, not, is, is literally, it's not even a problem. You just treat it like you would your exterior paint anyway. But this area is protected with doom ceramic, so even a rinse that I, I've just done there has removed pretty much everything. There's a few bugs in here that have kind of made the way into the nooks and crannies, so that may need some agitation. So obviously that's all soaked up now. The most fun part of the process. foam um, again mixed into the normal dilution ratios as you can see it's just now sitting and soaking into the engine bay I'm not even going to give it any dwell time because our previous chemical it's kind of already starting to eat into it this is just literally to provide a little bit more bite um, and mainly lubrication and it's just moving all the dirt away so I'm going to show you the tools that we use again it's really simple so the full, the full line of the wheel woolies that are going to be used to all three sizes. Um, I'm going to use the wheel phaser brush on the big parts of the kind of engine bay cover, the rocker cover, anything like that, the scuttle. And one of our first, one of our first brushes that were in development, really cool brush. Um, so this is going to be in the more intricate areas. Just rinse the foam off. So the wheel woolies face brush. Again, anything like this. And all you want to do. By the way, this the bonnet strut. Even though I've got pneumatic ones on the side because the bonnet's so heavy, can't even hold the weight. So. I'm not scrubbing, I'm just moving around the young foam. As I said, the protection, exactly the same thing as I see on the paint. It's down to the protection on the engine bay. This was an engine bay that you haven't treated for many, many years. You may have to agitate a little bit more aggressively. Whereas with this, I mean, even the foaming of the engine bay is way too kind of overkill and something that is maintained the way I maintain it but because I haven't done it for a while in my terms just want to give it a bit more bite now as I said it's all splash proofed so the foam is actually getting deep into the areas you'll probably never reach. So it's softening up everything. Oh. And again, just this area. Again, I always just make sure I rinse it every so often just to get some fresh water in there. Boom, job done. So that's pretty much 90% of the engine bay already done. Now for the bits that you can never reach, again, trust the old wheel woolly so anywhere so deeper into the engine bay 
This has got an amazing reach. Now all three wheel woolly sizes, you can literally get directly in between the wires even. In between the bonnet struts. Now for anything which these brushes can't hit, which is very unlikely, but the one or two percent that's left, we will take the detailing brush. And you would just make sure in between the connections or where the bolts are, Now, in my words, the car's never clean unless the engine base clean or the barrels of the wheels. It's not a complete detail otherwise. Um, again, this is going to be a maintenance detail for me, so I'm just going to wash the car, remove the weeks, because the car is, it never sees the elements. Um, so the car, even though it's been raining the past couple of weeks or the, the past couple of days, the car hasn't seen any rain, this is why it probably looks still really good on camera. But what it has seen when the car is driven is the pollen, flies, anything like that. So I just want to get rid of it, put some detail spray on, just add the gloss back in. Um, the Yum Ceramics still doing amazing protection. As I said in the previous videos, I do this maintenance detail every few days. It obviously depends on the weather. If it's raining, then I just can't do it really. So in between the bolts, coil packs where the oil is, the dipsticks. Beautiful. Now into the foam part. Now I'll try and do a bigger rinse on this cycle just to make sure all the foam is off. So I will stand back again like when I do the final rinse of the car. Try and get it with as much water as I can. Again, the safe, the same safety parameters. as I said the actual engine base is kind of exposed if you will if you look at the ground the water is falling directly through it as I said it's open underneath yes it's not completely open but it's got sizable holes um, so you can see the foam's actually running away so it's going through the engine bay and it's um, it's coming out under the car so as I said water in the engine base totally safe
So, energy bay is rinsed. Now there's two ways you could do this. Um, way number one. So the last time I dressed this engine, the car was already in because, so it was already inside um, because I was doing some of the testing on the panels of the various products. So I kind of left the engine wet as it is. I rolled it in. Now there's a few ways, as I said, you could now dry the engine with a few Umecar's utility towels dry it all off I normally start the engine as well so it heats up and evaporates the water um, what I do then is I get the young dress and I apply to literally everything in the engine bay apart from the painted parts like here and I basically I just leave it now that will get you so much durability you'll be looking at a six to eight months easy um, as I said look it looks as if the engine bay has actually been coated um, everything's just beaten off everything's running off now um, I will reveal this to you I'm developing a new product so it is a water activated dressing so the car is now or the engine bay is now wet what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and get the dressings so it's a different formulation that we're working on as well so it's going to work hand in hand with the um dress very similar technology but it's a little bit more versatile where you could use it and dry as well so engine bay is wet i'm going to go and get the other dressing i'm going to spray it all over including the painted parts anything that's just within the engine bay and i'm just going to close the bonnet and what what happens after about 24 hours so obviously if you drive home or you leave the car here for example um, the dressing in the water will actually soak into the plastics and what that will leave you with is a fantastic shine now with this with this dressing you can actually make it up in a few various variants so you can have it completely matte satin shiny whichever way you want it you can actually work the dressing to your liking as well so i'm going to spray it in i'm going to close the bonnet and just leave it if i was to open the bonnet 24 hours later the, all the water's dry the whole sheen and the shine has been actually absorbed into the plastic and the engine bay will literally look better than it left the factory so here comes the future development we're still working it but as is now so this is a few attempts that we've tried at this as the dressing sits in this bottle now it is actually really really good easy to use you can use this in all your plastics etc but in this case, I'm using it specifically, exclusively on the engine bay. So as I said, I always give the chemicals a good shake. And be nice and liberal with it. It's okay if you get it on the panels because we're gonna be washing the car in a second anyway. So I like to get it into all the black hoses, into the nooks and crannies, and it's as easy as that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close the bonnet, I'm gonna let it sit, I'm gonna wash the car anyway now. So if I've got a little bit here or a little bit on the side fenders, it's fine. Um, so what happens within 24 hours, as I said, it's, it's literally, it's magic. So it mixes with the water, it activates the dressing, Obviously everything is porous, even paint. It may not look porous to you, but stuff does seep into it. So plastic is a very porous material. So it's gonna activate with water. It's gonna seep into the plastic. Now I've mixed this in to be a satin finish, okay? Um, sometimes if I'm going to show us, I'll mix this up in a different way. So more than likely neat. And this will give like a high crush shine as well. But for general use at the minute, I'm still working with the formulations, how you dilute it, etc. Um, but at the minute it's going to give like a, a nice a satin finish um, more on the side of gloss if you could see the scales if you've got satin it's a little bit more satiny than usual um, and that's it so between now and the drive home obviously the engine bay is going to heat up um, well quite a lot because it's a big block um, and that actually activates the whole time frame a lot quicker so when I say 24 hours it's if you to leave the car here overnight obviously no engine being started um, but obviously i'm going to drive home in it um, so probably by the time i get home this dressing would have already activated and seeped into the plastic um, and also because of the heat as well the heat's going to actually bake it into the plastic from the engine bay and it's just going to go nice and crisp so 
so it's nice and white everywhere um, as I said it's going to seep in as you can see there's a lot of water which is here so all of that's going to go into the plastic and we're going to have a show winning engine bay so guys you've seen exactly how easy and how time efficient it is to clean the engine bay I really wanted to share this I mean I've been receiving a lot of emails about how do you keep your engine bay clean for anybody that knows me or has been up, person, up to the HQ um, a few people obviously say, can I look at the engine bay? So I'll show them and ask the questions. Um, so as you've seen, it's very, very easy. Um, I took it a bit one step too far, whereas I told you it hadn't been done in a while. So this is why I've kind of laid a couple of cleaning chemicals together. Um, but I'll give you um, an example of what's going to happen next. So the whole dressing is going to be now completely done. It's laid in. It's kind of been absorbed by the plastic. Um, so imagine in two weeks, four weeks, you say, I want to do an engine bay decal. What I would personally do is, again, I would restart exactly where I am now. Engine bay is nice and cool. I would thoroughly pre-rinse it. Of course, unless you've been driving through a month worth of storms and your engine bay is completely kind of exposed, like with my gills or the fins, you know, in engine bay. Um, maybe you would have to redo it. But most engine bays are... In terms of the bonnet it's sealed so they don't have any exposed holes so technically the engine should not get dirty a little bit of water might seep in if you're driving in the rain but imagine that it's going to be nice and dry you've got a normal car um, where you don't have stuff flying into the engine bay um, you would lift the bonnet up make sure it's nice cool to the touch you would do a thorough pre-rinse you can then spray the dressing or dry the car and then dress it and you'll be completely done you can have your engine bay done in about three to five minutes um, Again with mine, because um, stuff does fly in through the air scoops. Um, the engine is protected. It's, it's exactly the same thing as the paint. So if your paint is waxed and you're getting all the bugs on the front, a normal pre-rinse will remove everything anyway, usually everything. Um, so exactly the same thing on the engine bay. It's not going to get as bad as even the front bumper of the car. So good thorough pre-rinse, dry the engine bay, hit it with your dress, done. And you just keep maintaining it like this. Um, I am quite excited to show you um, a new development that we're working on. So the dressing is in the same family of dressings. Again, we try and coexist all the products. Um, but with this, you can dilute it and you can use it for different applications. So we're kind of working on the stability of where can it work inside as well. So like door, like door card, plastic, stuff like that. Um, it actually feeds the rubber, it feeds the plastic. It adds that anti-static properties to it. So when I do drive home, let's say tomorrow and the next week is going to be unbelievable weather. So again, the pollen count is going to go up. Um, and what it's designed to do with anti-static, it's meant to just keep it going. So in, when the things land, it's meant to kind of hit and fly off again. Um, in theory, again, stuff will stick. Um, you, can't, you can't help that stuff will get dirty. Uh, so you've seen the engine bay is going to look crisp. It's going to look sharp. You're going to use two chemicals. Yum foam, yum dress. Grab yourself a couple of utility towels just to dry it off. Again, those utility towels will then only be used on wheels and engine base, so don't use it inside or on the glass. Um, and grab yourself yum dress, dress it, it's done. Um, again, the yum foam doubles up as you could use it as a pre wash as well. So it's not like you're buying a bottle of yum foam and then using it on only the engine bays which lasts you a long long time because how often do you do an engine bay exactly the same thing with the yum dress you, you then use it on the exterior plastics you use it on the tires um so not many products no many accessories again wheel woolies you can use on the wheels exhaust engine bays like i said on the wheel woolie video um so you buy the stuff and you use it all over the car um so i hope you found this video informative um even though it took me about five minutes to wash the engine bay the video is a lot longer because i'm explaining um let me know what you think in the comments and how do you maintain your engine bays uh, if you've got any questions shoot me an email at info at uk. facebook instagram it's all the same um ask myself and kelly some questions um as i said if you've got a normal stock engine bay you're going to be totally fine now if you've got an aftermarket engine bay so you've got exposed air filters nice and easy you just bag them up um, or in some cases air filters you can unscrew it obviously put it inside and stuff a few utility towels flush towels into the hole or just bag it up tape it up and you're fine 
Um, I've done a lot of aftermarket engine bays where that's exactly what I've done. Everything else is still splash proofed and every time your engine bay is going to look great. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.